Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So this is the time-lapse uh, part of uh, modeling the medieval uh, tutorial uh, series. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the modeling. Uh, as you can see, I started out with a reference image. Uh, this is very useful, mostly if you are uh, planning to share your work with different people because you're not sure if uh, they do care about, if they care about uh, uh, scale or using real world scale or not but uh, so it's always safe to just uh, assume that uh, when people are going to use your project or going to use your assets are uh, they going to uh, need, need them to be to full scale so that's why i'm adding uh, this uh, reference image of a man and a dog to get uh, the height reference uh, so what i'm doing here is very simple just extruding uh, different faces uh, to get uh, the shape that i want and uh, yeah so yeah, uh, what I'm extruding here is just to get this uh, room that is protruding out of uh, the building. And uh, what I what you saw me do there is uh, I selected the faces. Uh, to make them straight, I scaled them on the axis that I wanted to that I wanted them to be straight uh, by zero. So if say you want to scale them on the x-axis by to make them straight on the x-axis, I uh, select the faces or edges or vertices that you want to have straight. Uh, select them all and then hit S, uh, then the X, the axis you want. So for example, this time we, we try to do the do it in the X axis. So we do S, X, and then zero to scale this in the, to make the selection, uh, to straighten up the selection on that axis. Uh, you saw me, what you saw me also uh, delayed the other section of the building uh, so that I can use the mirror modifier to model that area uh, that also makes the work uh, a little bit easier and uh, uh, because Blender is going to model one part and you're going to model the other part as well so it's just uh, an easier just making your workflow a little bit easier so when you if you can uh, utilize uh, the mirror modifier always do because that speeds up uh, the work and uh, uh, also makes sure sh makes uh, gets rid of the repetition that uh, that can really tie you <coughs> in the modeling process. Uh, so, <coughs> yeah. So to make the bricks, uh, you, as you can so, you saw there, I just used uh, a cube and uh, moved uh, the vertices around, and then used the array uh, to duplicate them across the vertical space. And uh, now I'm just get uh, adding some variation between the bricks uh, because uh, the array modifier just makes uh, an exact duplicate on the axis you choose and uh, we choose the we chose the y axis the z axis uh, so it duplicated those in the y axis so they were they they were identical duplicates so i just went in and uh, moved them a little bit uh, so what i tried i was trying to reduce the polygon count so that's why you saw me delete the inside um uh, faces but i think i undid that because i it's it's, it's just blocks uh, that are about i think is it i don't know they don't take a lot of vertices so i ignore i i, I just undo uh, that and i uh, left the the, uh, the inside faces uh, there i also duplicated them across the other uh, corners uh, but uh, i instead of using shift d i used alt d that will duplicate an instance instead of uh just a duplicate uh this an instance will let you edit one copy and all the copies will be will uh, all the changes you make or all the edits you make will be carried onto the duplicates uh, so that's the difference between an instance and uh, uh, just uh, a regular duplicate that you do using out the sorry shift D so I'm just making the log here and uh, I, I beveled the edges uh, so we started out with a box and then beveled the edges uh, what you saw me there is just a share tool uh, so that's the bottom the most uh, the second last uh, tool uh, it it's just used to share I, I don't know what's the term the right term for it but uh, it twists or makes you can change your polygons you can uh, kind of skew or rotate your polygons in that diagonal direction uh, as you saw me there using the shear tool and uh, uh, they change the shortcuts uh, so it used to have a shortcut in uh, Blender 2.7 and below, uh, but now the shortcut has been changed. Uh, I don't remember what the shortcut is, but uh, you can just use the tool that you see at the, as the last uh, bottom, the second last uh, tool in the tools section. 
uh, and uh, this tool is only accessible if you are in edit mode of a mesh uh, it's not accessible in I don't think it's accessible in any other type of object it's only accessible in uh, meshes and uh, when you are in edit mode of those meshes so I'm just making duplicates and uh, not just duplicates just but uh, instance instances duplicates in instances not just duplicates uh, as regular duplicates so that if I make changes to one duplicate they'll be transferred to any other duplicate that I have uh, for that mesh and uh, yes yeah, so again just moving around and adding a few details uh, that you see on the reference image uh, so it's very important to be using reference images uh, because uh, when you start modeling you don't want to worry too much about the create the creativity part of what you're modeling you want to be focused on the modeling part and uh, uh, find the most efficient way of modeling so if you don't have a reference image uh, then you can draw out what you want to have uh, so that you don't just imagine what you're modeling uh, you imagine what you have what you want uh, draw it out and then start uh, modeling from a reference you drawn out or from a reference you got online like you see in the example I have here so that makes makes it easy for me to concentrate on the modeling so what you saw me there, do there is just uh, uh, beveling uh, the edges so I started out with a mesh and then selected the topmost uh, corners of vertices and then just the two vertices the topmost vertices and uh, use the shortcut Control shift B uh, to bevel just uh, the edges uh, that will round off uh, those corners into uh, the corners you saw there and uh, you can increase the resolution of those corners by using your mouse wheel uh, to have that more vertices or less vertices and uh, but so if you want to there are two types of bevel uh, the one you saw me do which is beveling uh, the vertices and uh, the other bevel you can bevel faces and you can also bevel uh, edges that is just the regular bevel which is done using the shortcut uh, control B uh, so what you see me here is that see me do here is uh, just adding those uh, rocks or bricks around uh, the house uh, around the uh, the door at uh, the door frame uh, decoration stuff and uh, uh, it's very basic stuff just moving the vertices around so instead of using a cube I started with a with a mesh because I didn't want to have to select uh, the vertices on the other edge on the other side so because I'm using just a plane I can just single select uh, the vertices that I'm seeing uh, if it was a cube uh, it would I would have to uh, to select uh, the other side and uh, you see me now uh, extruding that uh, to get the extruding the faces to give uh, to the planes to give them that volume uh, that the cube would give uh, but the problem with uh, starting off with a cube uh, then when you're trying to move or edit the vertices uh, you would have to select uh, the vertices on the other side which is another step that I would rather not do uh, so yeah so I think I didn't talk about uh, how I did add uh, that uh, entrance or hole be within that wall that wall I just used a boolean a boolean modifier to cut out uh, that wall oh uh, it's very simple you just add uh, select the mesh add the, bo the boolean modifier and uh, uh, create uh, the the cube uh, the, the the door frame and then use that as uh, the boolean object uh, that, uh, that you're going to cut to use to cut out uh, that entrance uh, so the door was simple was very simple uh, so you can just go back to the time lapse uh, playback uh, re reverse it back to see how I did that because I think this is a, I didn't want to have the time this time lapse I didn't want uh, the time lapse to be too slow because uh, there are a lot of uh, blender users who are who are a bit advanced in blender uh, that uh, it's, it's kind of it becomes very repetitive and uh, unnecessary to show every single step uh, uh, in a slow speed uh, so but uh, you can always go back and uh, maybe even reduce uh, the YouTube play speed uh, to see the steps that I did uh, so here I'm just using the array to add those, to add those uh, diagonal supports uh, but uh, which were just uh, cubes that I, sh I uh, scaled down uh, in the X and Y axis 
Yeah, so yeah, and uh, here I'm just basically repeating the same steps over and over to create uh, this to get the shape that I want. And um, anyways, yeah, so yeah, um, let's see what else going on. Okay, so I think from here. I'm just going to let the video play back because I think uh, I'm not going to do anything new here. I'm just going to be doing the same things over and over and uh, moving uh, meshes around and uh, polygons around. Nothing unique that needs a uh, real explanation. And okay, maybe I can explain this. So this is when I'm creating that, uh, how would you call it? Uh, mm, do I know? Is it a knob? I, I don't know. I, I think it's uh, the door lock. So I just created a, a, a plane and then I uh, added a loop uh, that I beveled uh, using control B to get uh, two loops and then extruded the inner face, uh, pulled it out and then use control, control B to bevel that, uh, that extrusion uh, so that I can have rounded corners uh, that will make that uh, look uh, yeah, that will make that look. And now I'm adding the the, the kind of hand, the handle you you would use to bang on the door uh, or to knock on the door. And uh, for that, I just used the circle, extruded it, and then I uh, got the shape you see here. Uh, then I'm trying to join it to the other to the other uh, door knob. I, I don't think it's a knob, but uh, yeah. So uh, this is exactly what I did. I just selected the loop and. Uh, so to select a loop like that, you just use Alt R, Alt R uh, to select the loop. And you can also see the screen, the screen keys that I'm using there. Uh, if you notice them, you can notice them on the uh, bottom right corner of your screen. And uh, yes, so let's see, let's see, do, do, do. Yeah, so I'm just adding a few details here. Uh, again, you can select uh, the loop, uh, a loop by using alt and then you can use you can hold down alt or i think is it alt yeah you can hold down alt and then select any edge and it will select uh any loop attached to it uh or you can just double click double left click uh, with your mouse on any edge loop uh, this is a new shortcut in uh, blender 2.8 uh, so you can just select a loop like that you just double click on any edge loop and uh, it will select on any edge and uh, it will select any edge loop attached to that edge and so I'm just adding a few more details here again flattening up some areas there oh by the way this assets this asset you see here I'm going to be using it in my unreal game engine uh, sorry in unreal game engine uh, for the game I'm making, uh, the arrow game that I was, that uh, I think if you have been following my uh, my videos or my channel, uh, you probably know about uh, the project that I'm working on, uh, the, the arrow shooter kind of uh, first person survival game that I'm working on. Uh, so I'll be using this, and I think this month this this month we're going to be concentrating mostly on medieval kind of assets, uh, so that I can use those in my Unreal Engine project. And uh, so far we have created a, a bow and arrow. And then what else did we create? We created a target, a, can, a target to shoot at, but I think I was not happy with that. So I'll, I don't think I even, uh, sh I, I think, I, yeah, I did upload the video for that, but I was not very happy with the result. So I would have to do that again, or maybe find a different asset, work on a different asset uh, for that. Again, if you want the project files, you can uh, just find them on my Patreon page. Uh, the materials uh, that I used in this project and uh, most projects that I'll be creating will be available for free and you can download them on uh, on my Blender uh, website, uh, which is blender101.com. Uh, so I'll be leaving a link in the description. So I, I don't think I need to explain these areas here because I'm doing the same things uh, over and over, just moving vertices around. Uh, again, that's the shear tool. Uh, it straightens or kind of gives uh, that diagonal angle to any edge uh, that you select and uh, uh, move around. 
So another thing you see me here, I'm not modeling uh, the entire mesh as the entire building as one mesh uh, because I wanted to keep it uh, as a modular house uh, so that if I wanted to create a variation of this building, I didn't have to start from scratch. I just move uh, the different elements that I've mo modeled uh, to get a different look. Uh, so uh, you can see uh, because I have, uh, I don't know if I show it in this, yeah, I think I, I just did that. So if I want uh, to have a door on a different area of the house, I just move, just select the door and then move it, place it on a different part of the building, uh, like you just saw me do there. So that's why I try to model things in a modular, in a modular way, uh, so that I don't have to go back and start from scratch. Uh, yeah, so you can easily make a lot of variations of the building uh, using the same assets uh, like this. And uh, yeah, so you can see if I had uh, made those logs as part of the main mesh, I would have, I would have to, it would be a very lengthy step to kind of create a door entrance like that if I was uh, to build the same thing as an as a single mesh. And uh, it doesn't really have any, doesn't make any difference in polygon count, I think. So it does really, it does make s some difference, but uh, it's not that much. Uh, so because we are not using a lot of polygons uh, to create this house, so it doesn't matter if it, if you have a few, uh, a few extra polygons to get uh, that uh, is, is of use uh, for your model. So Okay, so let's see what did I... Uh, I think I'm going to end uh, this part here and uh, because right now I'm not seeing a lot, I'm not seeing anything new that I'm doing, that I'll be doing here uh, that needs explanation. Oh, for this part here, I could have modeled this, uh, this uh, kind of porch uh, to, be, uh, to be part of uh, the main mesh, but uh, uh, I wanted again uh, for the same reason that I was trying to make the other parts modular uh, It's the same reason that I've made this part modular uh, Because if I wanted to move this on any other part of the mesh I could easily move it just select uh, that part and then move it to another area uh, So this uh, for this here, I wanted to create a different door So I selected the, the top parts and I straightened them again using the same in the same in the same oh actually i didn't do it in the same way i just added the uh, mirrored the bottom part to the top part so i added a loop in between uh, uh to be the mirror center of the object i selected the top arch and deleted that so to remain with the bottom part i uh, then set the the cursor to be this to the center of uh, that mesh and i used it as the mirror center of the object to flip the vertices around or to have or what you see to have that door there without modeling the entire thing from scratch and yeah, so when you do a lot of uh, modeling practices you start to learn a few tricks uh, that can ease or and even speed up your workflow like you see there uh, because you can see now i don't really have to model everything from scratch i can reuse uh, the different assets and uh, trick them a bit to get uh, something different as you saw there yeah and uh, talking about learning new things uh, so uh trying trying to use unwrap this building would be really hard if i didn't figure out a new way to an easier way to do it so i'll be making a tutorial on how to easily uv unwrap anything any any object you have in your project Yeah, so I think I'll end this part here, and uh, uh, then uh, the next part will be it will simply be a time lapse video without any commentary because it will be the same thing, uh, just uh, in different parts of the building. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.